Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my version of The Martian in Kerbal Space Program. And this right here is what I call a Hermes. Not that little, tiny, long thingy something that you've seen in the movies, no. Hermes, of course, is a Greek god and he was known for traveling really fast and in many depictions he had wings on his feet. So I figured my Hermes should have wings. This, of course, posed a bit of an engineering challenge. You may have noticed that the booster stage has, well, also wings, but arranged in a bit of a peculiar form. That is to counteract the big wings up front on the payload so that the craft won't flip uncontrollably through the atmosphere and crashing violently into the ground. Fortunately, we're launching with remote control enabled, so we're just using the probe core on board of the Hermes. And we're already out of the atmosphere, well, mostly out of the atmosphere, and now we're setting up our circularization burn. You may have also noticed I've chosen a very steep trajectory. Reason for that is the same reason I did the thingy with the wings on the booster stage. Okay, final ascent stage boosting us into a stable orbit and then the Hermes will be ready to be completed. Yes, this thing is not yet ready to travel to Duna. We're still missing some crucial parts. Okay, let's drop that stage. Open up the cargo bay and the antenna. And yeah, the Hermes is now ready for action. But let's try something out. I have also have this fine uh, flight manager recovery stage uh, mod. And I'm trying to use this to land this stage safely on Kerbin. So I've added some parachutes and I've added, well, I've left a little bit of fuel in the tanks. But yeah, this did not work out as I expected, as you may see in the next few seconds of this video. So first we're still in the clear, we're moving along fine through the atmosphere, burning a little bit as expected. But we're moving very fast, very quickly, and I'm afraid we're moving too quickly. One of the reasons being was that we have chosen the steep trajectory I've mentioned before, and therefore, of course, slamming down really fast through the atmosphere and therefore into the ground. Okay, so first I tried to use the parachutes, but of course they wouldn't fire because we're too fast and I fired the engines to slow down a bit, then I fired the parachutes and then they ripped everything off. Well, not as I had hoped, but well, SpaceX didn't fare any better this time, did they now? But on the other hand, they too did not expect to succeed their landing, so yeah. Okay, now time to get the crew on board. I'm jumping a bit ahead through the timeline because before we actually move to Duna, we have to deliver some supplies to Duna as well, you know, some rovers and stuff. But I've already done that, but that's not as interesting as seeing the Hermes in action, so I thought I skipped the timeline around a bit. So you may regard the next episode as sort of a flashback. Okay, now we're using an SSTO craft to deliver our crew and also some other stuff to the Hermes. Okay, now we're trying to set up our orbit and then we of course have to get a rendezvous and then the two mighty fine vehicles are going to meet and there they are okay closing in beautiful you may have noticed this SSTO is working solely with liquid fuel and oxidizer and not with jet fuel so yeah I couldn't be bothered to build one that has to juggle around jet engines and chemical rockets, so yeah. 
This is what I came up with. And we're trying to dock this thing inside the cargo bay of the Hermes. And in order to do that, I have, of course, installed Infernal Robotics and added some telescopic arms so the docking port could extend. Otherwise, it would not have been possible to dock the vehicle inside of that cargo bay. I could have, of course, used the docking port up front of the Hermes, but that would have been too easy now. And also, I need that docking port, as you will see in just a few seconds. Or minutes, I don't know. Okay, now we're moving in closely. Already feeling the magnetic grip and yes, the vehicle has docked. Okay, now time to transfer the crew. We have six Kerbals that will travel to Duna. Jebediah, Bill, Bob, Valentina, Azina and Bark Kerman. Okay, and in order for them to get down on Duna's surface, they need a descent vehicle. And this is it, the newest development in lightweight crew landing capability vehicles. And of course, my maneuvering skills letting us down before we can get this thing to the docking port. Well, that's the wrong direction. But that's the problem with vehicles where you only have the RCS thrusters on one end. You really flip around a lot. Okay, just trying to adjust this really carefully. Of course, once again, my trusty docking port alignment indicator mod helping me out over here. Okay, now we're in the right orientation, but not the right translation. So this is going to change really soon. Okay, now since the indicators have changed from red to green, we are now in front of the docking port that we want to dock with. Okay, and now, yeah, some little time acceleration help. Okay, and yeah, I now realize that this docking port will not fit. Well, on the other hand, that craft in the middle is just a tug that I use to pull the descent vehicle out of the shuttle. So we're putting that back into the cargo bay. There you go. There you go, I said. Wrong direction, come on. Yes, that's fine. And now dock, you bastard. Boom, there we go. Okay, now we're going to use the Hermes to move itself up front towards the descent vehicle, but in order to do that we have to detach uh, what's going on? Ugh, come on. Yeah, so one of the perks of using Infernal Robotics is that sometimes the parts are really messed up when you dock with each other. Okay, so yeah, the shuttle got m a little less weight now because it's also lost its crew carrying capabilities. Well, that doesn't matter now, because the pilot is safe up front and we have delivered everything we wanted to deliver. So time to dock that thing up front on the Hermes. Okay, what are you doing? And this is looking better. Yes, come on, the sound vehicle. Get on there. I'm still calling the, it the MDV, although it's going to Duna, so it should be a DDV, but I don't know, MDV kinda sounds better. Okay, now that we have done that, it is time to go home for that uh, shuttle of ours. We're blasting the rest of our fuel so we can get our periaps really low. And then we're going to try to land this thing. Okay, atmospheric re-entry looking stable so far. 
a little bit of unexpected pitch, but nothing to worry about yet. Okay. We're getting closer to Kerbal Space Center. We're going to overshoot it, I'm afraid. Oh no. Aren't we somewhere else entirely? I don't know. I'm not good at geography. At least not in this game. Okay, we're trying to break a little bit harder now. Because I want to touch down on flat land and not flat water. But it appears that my vehicle has a mind of its own now. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, that's just, that's that's the space center. I was right. Okay, but in my effort to land at the space center, I might have put this thing into a tail-ended stall spin. So, yeah, you might remember my other SSTO attempt, this ended similarly. So, now you know my secret, I'm really good at putting stuff into orbit, I'm really bad at landing it back at the space center. Well, but it looks nice though. Okay, we got still some fuel left in our tanks, maybe we can stabilize the vehicle with that. Yeah, that looked better, no, it does not. And Ooh, well, the pilot survived, so another successful landing. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.